everybody, guys? It's your boy, Ash. I'm coming to you guys this Sunday with my review of One Piece chapter 996. Guys, we are getting ever so close to chapter 1000. No break next week, so 997 is on the way. We're a week away. I'm so excited, guys, here. But let's focus on this week's chapter. We got an early release. Uh, chapter 996 was crazy. We were all over the place. It was super fast-paced. We got where everybody is. Uh, kind of get them a glimpse of what's going on inside the entire dome and what's going on on top. And I thought it'd be fun for this review to go level by level from basement number two to the rooftop, guys. So I'm going to do that. That's how I'm going to talk about the things here. So let's jump right in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more of my videos that will be coming soon this week as well, guys. So uh, we're going to start at the very bottom. Basement level two is the bottom of the Skull Dome. And this is where we find the law. So we haven't seen law since they arrived at Onigashima and they uh, walked into the performance hall. Um, Law kind of left the scabbards to do their thing against um, the drawing guy. Now I forgot his name, but whatever his name was, uh, one of the old scabbard. Now you guys know who I'm talking about. I'm just having a mental brain fart right now. <laughs> but um, so Law is has made his way to the basement level. He's in the very basement. We see him taking out a couple guards here as well, and. We get a flashback with a conversation he had with Robin. And in this conversation, he comes out to Rob, sorry, dog hair all over myself. He has a conversation with Robin about his true name. So he reveals to Robin that he is a D. His name, his full name is Trafalgar D. Waterlaw. So he comes out and tells Robin and Robin's like, wow, this is shotgun. I didn't know you had the name D as well. And he says that he, or she's the only one he's told this to. He hasn't told Luffy or anybody else. So Robin is the only one he is told. And that's because Robin has knowledge of the past here. Robin is the ship's uh, archaeologist. So she's going around gathering information about the void century and what happened. So it makes sense that Law confided in Robin trying to get answers. And unfortunately, Robin wasn't get, able to give Law the answers he was looking for. She says, unfortunately, I don't know anything about it. Luffy may not care, but during this journey, regardless, we're all gonna find out what happened to the uh, Will of D. And the only way to do that is to defeat the four emperors. Not that they'll make it easy. <laughs> and Robin just chimes in with her little quirks. It's not that they'll make it easy, but that's how you're gonna find out what happens. So really cool scene. We kind of get a glimpse of the when we find out about the Will of D is probably after the arc of the four emperors is done. When all this is said and done, he's had Luffy has gotten his chance to kind of take out each emperor, really mess with them like he did with Big Mom, now with Kaido, uh, who knows Shanks maybe next, and obviously Blackbeard will follow. Once this arc is over, we may get the uh, reveal of what the D stands for, the history of the D, right before the final war uh, with the world government. So uh, this is kind of a lead into that, and we may call back to this chapter when Robin kind of talked about it as well. So this is where Law is, and he finds a poneglyph. It's not a red road pon poneglyph. It's just a regular poneglyph. We don't know if it's just one with information on it or one that leads you to one of the ancient weapons that Kaido found, but there is a poneglyph here on Onigashima. Um, but it's not the one Law is work looking for. So that means the red pony glyph that Kaido has is somewhere else, maybe in Kaido's chamber or something like that. So uh, we'll find out more about that, but he has a callback with Korra and Korra's like, the will of D, those with the name D are the enemies of the gods. And Law says, all right, Korra, this might be the time I'm gonna figure out this checkered past of mine and figure out what the Will of D stands for. So that was a really cool uh, scene in this chapter. I really like that we got a call back to the Pony Glyphs. It's been a while since we've talked to that. And now we know what Law's goal is here. He's looking for answers, he's looking for the Pony Glyphs and he might make his way to the top now after he, um, he might take down the Pony Glyph. I'm not sure if he will, but he might do it and give it to Robin, which would be helpful uh, at the end of the day. So that's where we are at the bottom level. So he is at basement number two. <laughs> Trying to throw the ball for my dog. All right, so next up is basement level one. We don't know if anyone's on basement level one, guys. So as far as I know, no one's there. We go up to the first floor and there's a lot of action going on on the first floor, everybody. I think this is where most of the people that are uh, in the story are right now. So I think it's the first floor and this is where the performance floor is, the forehead floor and the, um, the right brain towers. So these 
are three separate levels. I think all on the first floor are very near the entrance of the first floor. So let's start with the performance hall. So the performance hall is a very quick scene. The quick scene is with Big Mom. Obviously, she dipped past Marco in the last chapter, and she's making her way to the rooftop. Her goal is to get to Kaido, and she busts into the performance hall where Zoro, where uh, Drake, Nami, not Nami, uh, Chopper, Robin, and uh, Brooke are. They all are shocked by this. And Big Mom, real quick, is like, I'm not here for you guys. I'm making my way up to Kaido. And she's bursting through, and you see all the ice on. He's, like, grabbing individuals. But very quick scene, but I did notice that Chopper's, like, half his body is now iced over. So you see one eye is, like, crying because Big Mom showed up, but the other one is, like, white with ice on it. So a scene to kind of like glimpse of a, what's going on in the performance hall. Time is running out. Chopper's slowly turning into one of the ice figures. So it may come down to Marco showing up and helping him quickly capture um, Apu and getting the antidote. So not only will Chopper get cured and then he could replicate it and get it to everyone else as well. So that was a quick scene. Uh, we kind of move on from there. So I think the forehead floor, and this is where Nami, Usopp, uh, page one and ulti were with now Tama and the uh, Komaino and now the baboon. They're all in the forehead floor. And I think that's either right on a section of floor one or just slightly above or slightly below. It's near the first floor, I believe. So this is where Nami and them are. So last chapter, Komaino at the very end of the chapter came in and took a bite of Ulti, put him in his mouth and kind of threw her aside. And we see the result of that. Now Nami, Usopp, Tama are all running away on the Komainu's back here. Usopp's in pretty bad shape. <laughs> Nami throws in a real great line. She's like, oh, Usopp, of course you're not fine, but don't worry, I'm okay. So let's look on the bright side. <laughs> we're like, okay, Nami, there you go. She had her epic scene in the last chapter. She's back to her usual self. So, her funny quirks, so uh, she's she's happy that she's okay, but obviously Usopp's in bad shape, so they're escaping right now. And the baboon shows up, so not only the Komainu, but the baboon is here as well. And the baboon clashes with page one here. Very short scene as well, but they clash, and Nami's like, is it okay to leave the baboon fighting page one? I mean, they're one of the flying six, they're strong. And Tama turns to Nami, he's like, don't underestimate our power. We showed up here as samurai. So whatever happens, this is our goal. Uh, this is our duty. So we're going to go after this. pig toy. Never get your dogs the pig toy. <laughs> so uh, Tama asks the baboon to hold off page one for three minutes. That's it. Three minutes and they can escape. So that's what's going on on the forehead floor. That's where Nami and... Uh, Usopp are escaping with Tama. The baboon is holding off page one. I really, for the sake of the baboon, hope the baboon can just hold off page one and then just dip out. <laughs> I don't want the baboon to get beat up or anything by page one. I would feel really, really bad. Uh, moving on to a different area of floor one, I think is the right brain tower. And the right brain tower is where Yamato is and they are fighting Sasuke's armor division and she's holding her own. They've surrounded her. They all got their armor plates on and they're firing cannons cannon after cannon at her and you see her getting hit by the cannons she's getting all burnt up and charred up uh but she's holding her ground she's bashing these shields up like nothing like crazy taking people out left and right and shinobu is like begging her like i you're a samurai forget about me take lord momonosuke you gotta get him to escape and yamato turns to shinobu is like Kazuki Odin would never abandon one of his scabbards, never do that. And it just hit you. You're like, wow, that's a really awesome scene. So Yamato really showing his grit to save not only Shinobu, but Momo as well, really stand up for them. And Sasuke's kind of getting annoyed. Yamato's making quick work of the armored division. He's like, if you think you can carry dead weight around with me standing here and letting you destroy my precious armored division, got another thing coming. So Sasuke starts to unsheath his sword, ready to get into it. His sword has such a cool, unique little pattern to it. It's got like these black lines going across it. And as Yamato sees this, she, for a second, says Sasuke and starts huffing and puffing. And all of a sudden you see her eyes go black and these teeth emerge. Like she was about to transform into something. Now I've seen a lot of people said that she's gonna be an Oni, that her, she's half Oni like Kaido and she can just turn into Oni. Uh, some people are saying that she has a dragon fruit, maybe a Western dragon since uh, Kaido is an, uh, like an Eastern dragon, like a Western dragon. That'd be really cool to see two different styles of dragons. 
or uh, something else. Maybe she has some kind of other fruit. Uh, the last time I saw something where the teeth kind of just grew is uh, like half fishman, kind of with like uh, Jack, where their teeth get long and they get jagged, like they're a half breed of something. So we obviously know the Yamato's half of Kaido, whatever Kaido may be, but we don't know who Yamato's mother is. Maybe Black Maria, which is a great guess, but we don't know what Black Maria is either. So, but really cool scene and you see Sasuke just look absolutely shocked. Like he knows what Yamato's powers are, but didn't expect her to use it here. And if Yamato decides to use whatever power that is and actually go aggressive on Sasuke, it looks like it could turn out really bad for Sasuke, but really good for us. That was an awesome scene, super, super intense. I really, really loved that part. I'm trying to find it here in the chapter because I really want to look at it one more time. She says Sasuke and then starts to grr, like grr. <laughs> so I don't know what that is. And then as this is happening, as she's like starting to transform, all of a sudden we see, we hear ha cha cha. And the number that was chasing the Frankie Shogun shows up with Frankie dipping. And this kind of like stops the transformation. Yamato and Sasuke both look. And as they're running, uh, Yamato recognizes Frankie and like, hey, you're Luffy's friend. And as they do that, Hacha goes full blown with his club and destroys the ground, makes a gigantic hole in the floor. And Sasuke's like, this idiot, what is he doing? He's letting them escape. So Yamato and all of them, Yamato, Shinobu, and Momo fall through the floor. And so Yamato's like, oh, perfect, thank you. Frankie, I'm gonna leave this up to you. You take you take care of Sasuke. So it looks like uh, Frankie is left on the floor to take care of Sasuke now. So that would be a really, really cool fight with uh, the Frankie Shogun and his sword against Sasuke in the armor division. Cause Frankie's left on top and Yamato's like, well, the least I could do is take care of that guy. And as Yamato's falling, he takes out his club and does some kind of, I wanna know what the name is, but I don't wanna say it wrong. He says, Nari Kabura, arrow and launches an attack up at uh, Hacha and nails Hacha in the chin. You just see Hacha's head explode and there's smoke coming out of it and Hacha slowly claps and takes out like half of the armor division as he does. So now it's just Frankie Shogun and Sasuke left on the left or the right brain tower. So that's only people there now. Uh, the number took out the armor division and now Yamato and uh, Momo and Shinobu all fell through, maybe to basement one is where they fell. They fell through the hole or maybe just to the first floor and they'll meet up with everyone going on in the ice, like the performance hall, so they'll meet up there. So really cool scene there as well, really intense. Uh, Yamato's, whatever power she may have, that was a really cool scene. Uh, I, I hope it's a dragon power, that would be really cool. And we haven't seen like an Oni power yet, even though it's been highly, highly suggested that uh, not only Kaido, but Yamato will have Oni power, so that'd be a cool scene as well. So really cool scene, the right brain tower, there's a lot going on, sorry if I kept going back and forth, but there's a lot in that chapter. And at the very end of it, Yamato is running away with Momo and Shinobu in her in her arms. And Momo's like, just leave me. Why are you so dedicated to me? And Yamato throws in a really good line. It's like, Momo, you're the one who's gonna leave, lead this world into a new dawn. And that's kind of all we get from that. So we're not sure what that means, what Yamato has in store for Momo, but we know that Momo can talk to animals, especially Zunisha. And it may be that that's one of the keys to leading the world into a new phase, that Zunisha and Momo will be part of the final war, with Momo leading Zunisha as part of one of the main weapons of the rebellion of the Alliance. So that's a really cool scene. That'll maybe a callback as well uh, later in the story of uh, Momo leading Zunisha and the Wano Kuni into a new dawn, or just Wano Kuni leading him into a new dawn of peace and love and uh all the good stuff. So a whole lot going on that floor, guys. Let's keep going. Um, it starts to ramp up pretty quick from here. I got my notes in front of me. So we jump up to the middle of the second floor, and this is where Luffy, Sanji, and uh, Jimbei are. And this is where the chapter kind of ends. They are dipping their way. They made it through the first floor. They're on their way through middle of the second floor, and they're taking out people left and right. And this is a quick scene, but at the very end here, uh, Sanji hears something coming from the third floor and he asks Jimbei and Luffy, he's like, hey, do you guys hear that coming from the third floor? Luffy and Jimbei are like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And we hear kind of what Sanji's saying and I'm gonna read it, it says, 
And so stomp, romp, stomp, tromp. Come, my dear, that's it. Nihaha. But my lord, you mustn't. It would be so naughty. And that's all we get. And the feeling Sanji gets, like his heart sinks. Either he's noticed that it's a beautiful girl and something's going on upstairs, or it's something that terrifies him, calling back to Ivankov and his time on Ivankov's oh. island. So those are the only couple times we've seen it looks like that on Sanji's face is when he sees a beautiful girl or when he sees uh, a not so beautiful girl or guy. <laughs> so uh, I guess we'll find out what's going on on the top, on the third floor. That's where Luffy is, is headed right now. He's making his way up towards the uh, the fifth floor and just above the fifth floor fifth floor, God, I can't say words, is the Skull Dome rooftop. So we're getting close. Luffy's making his way. Uh, he's on the second floor and we're what? Three chapters away. So third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor, and then maybe chapter 1000, we're at the rooftop. So <laughs> uh, I know someone came up with that and like kind of did the math. Uh, so great, great on you, whoever that was. That was really cool. And uh, uh, it might turn out to be that way as well. Uh, and then finally, uh, the third floor, we got a quick scene, and this is where Kid and Killer are. And Kid has been running through the floors, magnetizing all the scrap metal and all the swords and guns, and just squishing everything in his way into one arm. And he asks Killer, like, hey, do you think this is enough scrap metal? And Kid still has this foie foie laugh, but he's like, there can never be enough. And he's like, good answer. So he's collecting all the scrap metal he could possibly collect as he's headed up to the rooftop. People are trying to stop him, but they're just getting collapsed into his metal arm that he's making. So really cool scene. We kind of get to see where Kid and Killer are. So it was a good callback to them. It's been a little while since we've seen Kid and Killer. So I'm glad that was thrown in there as well. So now we've seen Law. We've seen Zoro, we've seen Drake. Uh, Hawkins is still a mystery. We're not sure where Hawkins is, but we know where Apu is. We know where Luffy is. So all the worst generation members are accounted for uh, for now, except for Hawkins. So uh, really cool. Quick scene, not too much to go into depth there, but uh, Killer, Killer and Kid are the closest ones to the rooftop as of right now. And finally, fourth floor, fifth floor, nothing that we know of, but at the rooftop, no dialogue that we see. There's no dialogue here at all, but we get this absolutely beautiful artwork of Kaido flexing. He just knocks somebody out and we find out that somebody is Kinemon. He with his big club, you see lightning going everywhere. Raven, stop. Just hit Kinemon square in the face. You see blood coming from Kinemon's face. The lightning going from the attack as well. Kinemon got hit so bad guys i'm so nervous for kinemo this does not look good and there was not an a sentence on the rooftop not a sentence not a word was said all we got was pure action uh after kaido hits kinemo we see denjiro stab kaido in the side i don't know if it did any damage but kaido notices it and all of a sudden we see blood again spear out like kaido just took out denjiro and after that we just get silence and we see all the scabbers, or at least most of them, scattered on the floor with mist and smoke going around them. We see uh, the ones that I can tell. I think it's uh, Kawamatsu. And then we see one with ears maybe in the background. Uh, and for sure, Raizo is there as well on the ground. They all look bleeding and beat up. And Kaido's just standing there stepping towards them. And he hits his club on the ground. It's not looking good. Luffy and the company need to get to the rooftop immediately, like right now. They gotta get there or things are not gonna turn out well. Like I'm really, really nervous for the scabbers. It's not looking good. Kaido came through. Uh, this is what we expected. We expected Kaido to come out of a dragon form and absolutely dominate and he's doing it. Uh, but it just makes me really nervous. So that's where we are, floor by floor. Everyone is scattered out. We're starting to make our way to the rooftop, guys. Uh, comment below. What floor interests you the most? What fight is interesting you the most? Do you think Sasuke and Frankie are gonna be the ones to fight now that Yamato kind of escaped with Momo on them? And uh, do you think Luffy's gonna get to the rooftop by chapter 1000, guys? Comment below with your favorite scene 
uh, your favorite floor and uh, what interests you most in this chapter. I know there's a whole lot, so I'm sure all of us have different parts that we're like really, really intrigued in. Obviously the rooftop, but I'm really interested to see what Law is doing down there as well. If he's gonna make his way to the roof or if he's gonna use this opportunity to go find out where the red pony cliff is, guys. So a lot going on. This is a longer review than normal, but I just really wanted to go floor by floor and kind of see where everybody is. But that's it for me today, guys. I'll be back again this week sometime with more One Piece videos, more other videos as well. So that's it. Peace. Have a fantastic day, guys.